Today I'm launching the pre-sale for my upcoming course all about the take-home project for iOS developer interviews. Now, as I was making this course, I kind of realized like, this is the course I wish I had when I was earlier in my career just getting started out. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you a quick course overview and then get into some of the details of the course later on. And like I said, this course is based around a typical project that you would get in one of these take-home interviews. And throughout my career, I've done probably 10 to 15 of these and passed them all. Uh, I've also given one as an interviewer to hire a junior iOS developer. So I kind of took all that experience and knowledge and, and put it into this course. And really the aim of it is if you understand all these concepts, like you have a really good grasp on them after you've done the course, uh, you're ready to be a junior iOS developer, like start applying. But it's not just for those that are, you know, in the job hunt or trying to get that job. Like at the end of the day, we're building a project together. Uh, you're gonna see how everything comes together holistically and, and we're covering a bunch of different topics. So, you know, you can end up with another portfolio piece or just another batch of code that you can reference for future projects. Now this course is gonna be about 38 videos long. So there's a lot jam packed in here. So let's talk about what you're actually gonna learn in this course. First things first, we're building our UI 100% programmatically. And you know, I don't have anything against storyboards, but it's just the truth. If you learn how to build your UI programmatically, you're just gonna have a better understanding of what's going on. And we're also using no third party libraries, like we're, we're writing everything ourselves. Now the common thread you'll see in all these take home projects is you're gonna have to do like one of the most common iOS developer tasks. And that is, you know, make a network call to an API, retrieve the data, parse the JSON, and display that data in a pretty UI, right? So you're gonna have to do that in pretty much every take home project. So of course we're gonna hit that. So we're gonna use Codable to parse our JSON among some other things. And when you do networking, you open yourself up to a lot, right? You have like loading states, memory management and capture list, right? Weak self, uh, image caching, right? You see all these images. You don't wanna be downloading those images every time they come on screen. So we're gonna cache those. Uh, pagination of network calls. As you can see, you're scrolling down. When you hit the bottom, we're bringing in the next 100 users, right? And that's very common in apps. Also, you know, there's empty states, right? What happens when somebody doesn't have any followers in this case, right? You gotta show that empty state. And then everybody's favorite task, we're gonna handle all the errors properly. And we're even gonna create a custom reusable alert uh, to show rather than the default one. And we're gonna dive into collection views with this course, also with a search controller, so you can search the list of followers. And as you can see on the screen here, things are animating around, moving. Uh, you know, that was possible before, of course, but you had to do a lot of like batch updates and, and it was a little wonky. Uh, now with the diffable data source that Apple released with iOS 13, that makes that a lot easier and much more efficient. So we're definitely gonna dive into that new feature. It's kind of like the new way to do collection views. We're also gonna touch on project organization and, and how all this ties together. And I think that might be the most beneficial thing, right? A lot of us out there, we've done one-off tutorials, but you know, seeing how the whole app comes together, all this stuff interacts, I think that is a very valuable thing. Another key skill we're gonna to touch on is composition and child view controllers in, and how to kind of build your app in a way that you don't have these massive view controllers. Now, again, we're gonna build this 100% programmatic UI. There's no third-party libraries at all. And if you look at this printout here of lines of code in my view controller, you can see the longest view controller is 200 lines of code. And I didn't even go crazy like over abstracting things. Like this is just normal uh, abstraction. Now, admittedly, this isn't the most complex app. I get it. But uh, I know a lot of you out there are struggling even with simple screens on having these, you know, seven, 100 line view controller. So I think this is gonna be a key skill. And here's an example of it with the user info screen. This top part here with the avatar, the header, the bio, that's its own view controller. These two components below it, those are its own reusable view controllers. And then even within that, see the view that has the SF symbol and this is public repos and then the count, like that's a reusable view. So by using child view controllers, these reusable views, like this is how we're avoiding the massive view controller. And I think this is a key skill that a lot out there need help with. And now here's more just rapid fire stuff you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn persistence by like adding something to favorites. We're gonna create our own custom alert that we're gonna show. Of course, we're gonna dive into some table views, uh, some swipe to delete action. Also, we're going to dive into dynamic type a little bit. As you saw earlier, we're going to use some SF symbols, UI stack views, uh, date formatters, delegation and protocols, Safari view controller. There's just so much packed into this course. Now that you know what you're gonna learn, let's talk about some of the details of this course. And first of all, who is this course for? Like, what is the skill level? Um, it's not for absolute beginners. For example, I'm not gonna stop and explain an optional. I'm not going to explain how an array works or, or how a for loop works, right? So I, I, I assume you have a basic understanding. That being said, uh, this is not crazy advanced. I would consider this intermediate. Like I said, the target is for people that are trying to become junior developers, right? They've already done the basics. Now they're trying to make that next step. So it's not crazy advanced. So if you have the basics down, I think this will be very helpful. I mentioned this earlier too, but really at the end of this, you're gonna have a portfolio piece. And what I think is also valuable is a, a code base that you can always go back and reference. Like <laughs> I go back and reference old code bases all the time when I'm building features. So this can be very, very helpful for that as well. And a real quick note on just the general learning, like, Ask any developer out there, if you 
you work on 10 different code bases, you're going to see 10 different styles, 10 different paradigms, 10 different like ways of, of building it, right? So I do not claim that this is the way, the best way, right? This is just one way. And back to like working on a lot of code bases, that is how I developed my style. I, I worked on one code base, took what I liked from there, took what I like from this code base, took what I like, and I built my own style based on that. So I do want to stress that this is just one way uh, to do things. So take what you like, leave what you don't, and develop your own style as you work on other code bases. So let's answer some questions here, right? Why am I doing 100% programmatic UI? Like I mentioned earlier, I just think you learn more. I think the storyboard can be magic for people that are just learning. When you build it programmatically, you have a better understanding of what's going on. Why is this in UI kit and not Swift UI? Well, Swift UI is a couple years away from being relevant in the job market. And like I said, I was targeting developers that are on the cusp of becoming junior developers, or maybe they're already earlier in their career and they wanna like learn right now. Swift UI will have its day for sure. It's gonna be a bit. I am requiring iOS 13 uh, in this course, and that is to help future-proof it a little bit. Plus, I wanted to really dive into things like the difficult data source, dark mode, all that stuff. I didn't wanna to have to do all the like iOS 12 conditionals, iOS 13 conditionals. So this is iOS 13 forward. Why no third-party libraries? Again, kind of the same logic uh, with the programmatic UI. You're just gonna learn more. And when you learn how to like write it yourself, things like networking, you know, we're not using Alamo Fire or anything like that. Um, then you can make a better, more informed decision when it comes time to use the library. I'm not saying never use libraries, but if you've written it yourself, you can understand the trade-offs. Like, oh, I've written that myself before. We don't need to bring in uh, a library. The perfect example in this app, all we're doing is basic get requests for networking. You don't need to bring in Alamo Fire to do basic get requests, right? So, but having that knowledge to know that uh, is key. So it also helps when you're turning in these uh, take-home projects, uh, you know, from personal experience, we, you kind of judge the ones that have seven third-party libraries in just this small project. Um, it's, it's like, did you even like write anything or just do a library for everything? So it does look better on you the less libraries you use. So I did want to teach it that way. Some quick notes on a typical take-home project that you could do for a job interview. They usually say, hey, take two to four hours to do this. They try to be respectful of your time. Um, so they, they don't necessarily expect you to, to go above and beyond like we're going to do in this course. Like this course is gonna take us way longer than two to four hours uh, to complete. Um, but again, I wanna do this for educational purposes. I wanted to teach everything. And then you can kind of decide when you're doing your take-home project, like how above and beyond do you wanna go with your time? And then also about this being a portfolio piece, I, I know when we're building this, you're going to think, oh, it'd be really cool if this app did this because we're dealing with GitHub and followers and you can do a lot with the API, but it's good. I think this is going to be a very good starting point for you to take this project, build upon it and build an even better like portfolio piece. Because like I said, I know when we're building this, you're gonna be like, man, I wish this app did this. I wish this app did that. Um, build it. And lastly, let's talk about the early bird special right now. It's currently 40% off during the pre-sale. I expect the full course to be launched uh, mid-January. I'm gonna be releasing it in chunks as I complete the videos because uh, I'm in the process of making 38 videos. Like that's a lot. Um, so I'm gonna be releasing it chunk by chunk, but by mid-January, the whole thing should be out. And then at that point, uh, the early bird special will be no more and it is 40% off uh, currently. So check that out. Link is in the description. So if you're interested and you do purchase it, I really hope you enjoy it. I'm proud of it. Like I said, this is the course I wish I would have had earlier in my career. And that's what I tried to set out to make. So hopefully you enjoyed if you choose to buy it and we'll see you later.